for our viewers to understand because you know there is a lot of uh, we say Al Qaeda, we say Taliban, we say all these kinds of uh, various names. But uh, if what you are saying is that if the LTTE, uh, if you take the LTTE, the terror organization which ran a war for more than 30 years, they fail. Now what they've been doing is they created a political party and slowly creeping into the democratic uh, process and trying to infiltrate the whole system as such what they couldn't do uh, 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 militarily. So is that what we are seeing happening in Pakistan? If so, is that the only country that, that has that threat or is it slowly spreading into the rest of the region as well? It is a regional threat. You can see Taliban itself, the Islamic Emirate of Taliban, as they call it, uh, it is a political religious ideology. They are not tolerating any other faith. They have destroyed the Bamiyan images. They attack the museum and destroyed the Buddhist and the Hindu uh, artifacts. They burnt the archives that had uh, the historical, including the Buddhist scripture. And they recently even killed people who were musicians. So it's a very intolerant ideology that is spreading and that is exactly what we must fight against. So in Sri Lanka, Salafi Wahhabism was introduced in 77 when we opened our economy. Our people traveled to the Gulf, they brought back their lifestyle, their education systems. What's and the difference, Professor, between the normal Islamic person and Salafi Wahhabism? Uh, almost all the Muslims in Sri Lanka they are very peaceful, but there are pockets of Salafi Wahhabism that was created after 77 and especially after tsunami because there was yeah. Arab funding, Arab preachers yeah. that came. And after the Islamic State uh, proclaimed a caliphate in 2014, this ideology cascaded to Sri Lanka and the ideology crystallized into operational cells. So Zahran was one of them. Mm. But most Muslims in Sri Lanka do not subscribe to this ideology that they must kill in the name of Allah and they must kill in the name of Islam. Zahran says that wherever you see unbeliever, kill him. And that you should do this to, pray, uh, to please Allah. But I want to tell you that this is not the ideology of most Muslims in this country. Because Muslims in Sri Lanka, they have lived in harmony with mm -hmm. other religions for 1,400 years. But government has to regulate the religious space because of three reasons. One is 2017, 18, 19, there were uh, Salafi Wahhabi texts introduced into the mainstream O-level and A-level books. So Ibn Abdul Wahhab, Ibn Qoyim, Yusuf Kardavi, uh, all these radical preachers, their ideologies were introduced, including Abu Allah Maududi. So we have to, to remove all the content from our books. Second is we must make sure that... That, that exists? Current. Yeah, yes, in fact it was only removed this month by the Education uh, Ministry. Uh, second is we have to make sure that um, no madrasa preach Salafi Wahhabism and ensure that these madrasas, at least one hour per week, they have a presentation on Christianity, on Hinduism, on Buddhism, on Judaism, so that Muslims will understand that other religions are also great religions. So, and the third is, we must not permit any Salafi Wahhabi preachers here. If they come, they should be immediately taken to custody and they should be investigated and of course we, should, we have to do this to deter others from coming because there were three to four hundred Salafi preachers, Salafi Wahhabi preachers here and we should ensure... Are they still here? Uh, no, they, have, they, were, they were deported back or they left. We should ensure that Sri Lankans do not go to Salafi Wahhabi madrasas or universities and study. They can go to Egypt and study, al -Azhar University. They can go to Indonesia, Malaysia and study, they must not go to countries that kill in the name of Islam. That should not be permitted because that ideology will come here if we do not take this uh, firm step.